Oops. What happened? You're still on. Hi, my name is Terry Sproul, and I want to welcome you to my studio. Tonight is our Tuesday night live class, so if you're watching this on YouTube at a later date, please subscribe to my YouTube and give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. And think about joining me on Tuesday night. Easiest way to find out where the link is is to join my group on Facebook called All Things Terry Sproul. Thank you very much. And that's my blog right there, too. I will always have all of the um, products that I use in the class tonight on my blog the next day, which is Wednesday. I also have Joe here helping me, and he's going to help with getting all the links up as we talk. So if you are live, you actually get the links live while we're talking. So, okay, I am going to switch over cameras. We are going to work in the art journal tonight, but I am going to kind of show you Canvas, too, so you'll see. So let me change cameras here. Okay, so this is what I was kind of talking about as far as a canvas goes. Um, tonight we're going to use napkins, these beautiful napkins that you can buy um, in the stores. There, there's all kinds of them. There's hundreds upon hundreds of them that are just absolutely beautiful. I have more than I can tell you I have. but. Um, Remember, I'm always telling you guys that everything I do in an art journal, you can do on a canvas. Well, here's my proof. Tonight, or over the weekend, I did this canvas. And this is using this napkin right here. And I did the paint over technique that I'm going to show you tonight. So I actually painted this one, the one that's on the canvas, and this is the original. So you can see the original and then where I paint it over it. And it gives you a lot of texture. See how much texture I have on there? So I really want to quickly show you that and we're going to zoom back out and get into our art journal. Okay, let me take that logo down too. Okay, perfect. Um, I've been getting a lot of questions again about art journals. So I'm going to real, real quickly talk about art journals. Um, when you buy yourself an art journal, I suggest that you buy one that is at least 90 pounds of uh, paper. This one is from Carson. There's also one that's from Stratmore. And then the one I like is from Cottonwood. But you'll see down in the bottom, most of them have a poundage. This one happens to be 98 per, um, pound paper. And it actually says mixed media on it. So the paper that's in here is a little thicker paper. It's got a little more oomph to it, and it can take the um, paints and the inks and everything that you're going to be putting onto it. If you're like me and you do a lot of really heavy mixed media, you might want to get yourself this um, Cottonwood Art Journal. And the reason I would suggest the Cottonwood Art Journal over any of the other ones is their pages are very thick, as you can see. That's almost... Um, you know, I, I don't really, I can't really say. It's like an eighth of an inch. See how thick that is? It's a thick, thick board, almost. The downside is there's not a lot of pages in it, but it doesn't wrinkle. So even like all the pages that I have going here now, and it does lie flat also. Okay, so I want to start off by putting a napkin in my background. Now. If the napkin isn't going to fit your whole page or you're only going to use a section of it, like say this one, I might cut out this image and use just a section of it, then I will paint my background of my art journal the same color as the background in my napkin. But this particular one happens to be white, so I don't need to paint anything. The other thing you need to do is you need to remove the layers of, nap of napkins. Most napkins have two white layers and then one that actually is the color. So you will need to pull that part away from each other. Okay, now do not throw this away. This is still good. Um, ways that I've used this, you can stamp on this, you can actually still even see the design on it, so you could actually do another technique over this. Um, but I've also done it, say if I was using this one right here and I only use this small image, because of the texture I'm going to get here, I might put this whole piece down, well it would obviously be the one from behind here, 
lay the whole thing down and then put this over it because it'll give me the same texture everywhere else as the napkin. I hope that makes sense to you. So that's another way of using it. Now personally, I love PPA from US ArtQuest to lay down my napkins. Um, PPA seems to be a really soft, um, um, it has a soft consistency to the paint, to the, uh, to the glue. So it really allows you to lay down your napkin really nicely. I always just do half my page at a time. So I'm just going to start over with just getting the PPA on this side. Nice thin coat of the PPA on there. And then I will lay down my napkin. Actually, I really want it this side the most. So, And I will try to uh, lay it down as flat as I possibly can to get all the wrinkles out of it and get it nice and softly laid down there. Now at this point too I also will come in with my paintbrush and lay more PPA right over top. And again you want to do this really softly because this is a tissue. It's a napkin. It's a tissue. So it's going to be really really um, it's easy to rip is the word I guess I'm trying to get to. Now I can lift this up and put more glue down. Ran out of glue here on the side here. Hold on. You do want to get it completely covered because you don't want any bubbles. So you do want to get PPA everywhere on your your page. I can feel that I don't have it some up here so and the more time you take putting this down the better results you're going to get so do take your time doing it I'm I am a little bit rushed here but the better you take your time the better result that you're going to get in the long run so do take your time doing this now as you see my napkin happens to be bigger than my page so I allowed it to hang over the side and then I'm just going to rip away from the edge. A nice little hint though I can give you is if you are cutting out an image like this, instead of fussy cutting around it, what I will do is I will take a small paintbrush, like say maybe something this size, I will get it wet and I will go around the edge of my design and then you just pull away from the image away from the rest of it and it gives you a, a feather look and that feather look will give will give you the ability to lay down the napkin a lot better than um, just cut fussy cutting it out you actually will it will be more seamless is the word I guess I'm looking for so now I can go back and fix this later with some scissors and clean this up and get a better hole. Okay, so here's all my leftover and I can use that um, at a later date. So look, already we have a beautiful background already started for us and you haven't even done anything. This is why I was saying this is going to make you look like an artist because this is already basically done for you and we're gonna paint over this which will make you look like an artist so I'm gonna put my paintbrush in there okay give this a quick second to dry I'm gonna get my uh, paints ready so when, what I will do at this point and it's up to you this is an artist choice at this point you can go in and find your paints and find something that matches each of the, the paint colors you need exactly 
Or you can just have fun and paint them any color your little heart desires. There are no rules. So enjoy that and have fun because that's how I usually do it. But today I'm going to actually cut um, paint pretty close to the same. And I'm going to use silks. These are the acrylic glazes. They're acrylic paints by Color Art. Now what's kind of fun about these paints is they all have mica in them. So you get a really pretty shimmer. Now I know I'm going to put something over here, so I'm not going to even paint over on that side. So at this point, all I'm doing is going over the same area. So I'm just painting the same thing as what's there. So I don't even have to think. And if you miss a spot, it doesn't matter because there's orange underneath it. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to think about if I got my images, you know, the colors wrong. So I'm just, oh, sorry, didn't mean to be off camera there. I'm just painting in the images. Um, also, what I'm going to do is, I got, while at CHA, I got these micro beads. They're from Prima. And I got some silver. And I got some purple. So I thought about taking my paintbrush, as I dipped it into the paint, so now I have wet paint on my brush. Dip it into the micro beads. So I picked that up. See that? And now I can go in and lay these down on top of my image. And it'll give me a little more texture and just a little more fun. So let me see if you guys can see that. Oh yeah, see the texture I got there? See if I can get that to. You can definitely see the texture in that. See the beads? So, isn't that kind of fun? So, I'm just going to easily, quick, nothing, I'm not even pull most of the paint out of my brush, but a lot of it, and then change to another color. Now, I'm not going to do the whole page because you'd get bored watching me do every single color, but I wanted to show you a few at least. So again, I'm going to pick up this uh, kind of reddish here and do this red one down here. Oh, sorry. And I'll do this one right here. And I think I'm going to do these kind of in a purple and use those beads. So let me put this red away. And grab this purple over here. Real quick rinse. Again, I'm using all the silks. I think I'm going to go up this. So I'm going to dab in again to the paint. Dab into the micro beads. And I want to do these little... little sections right here but I'm going to do it in these purple. Now I am going to contaminate my paint a little bit with these beads so if you are OCC and can't handle that just put a little bit of paint on your um, craft sheet and take care of that that way so you won't have to worry about doing what I'm doing being bad. So the paint's going to adhere the uh, micro beads down. Getting a little bit of, I'm grabbing a 
toothpick because I want to get some of these beads off because it's getting a little too thick. Okay, so just getting those paints all the way up that. So again, gives me a little more texture on that than just the plain paint. And I can pull those extra beads out of that paint and not have to worry about it contaminating my paint. Ooh, that one needs to be purple too. Pretty, pretty, pretty. And this is a lot of fun to do because this is like painting by numbers or something like that. You know what I mean? It's just, it's, you don't have to think, so it's really, really relaxing. And you're going to come out with an amazing result no matter what because it's done for you, basically. I'm going to real quickly just do a little bit of these greens. And always try to use more than one color of anything, so... I'm not going to stay with this same color green throughout the whole thing. I'm going to come in with a little bit of a, I have a dark, two, two more shades of green down here. See that? So actually, I will open at least two of them and bring in another color. So you get more depth if you have more than one shade of green going. Because nature doesn't have just one shade of green, as you know. A couple things that are exciting. I went to Disneyland last week, which was fun for my birthday. My birthday is at the end of the month. And yesterday, I don't know if you guys know what a Hooser is. A Hooser is a kitchen cabinet from the 1920s. And I happened to found one yesterday for my kitchen, so I was very excited to put that in there this morning. And you don't even have to stay in the lines, as you'll see that I don't very well. Very pretty, very pretty. Okay. Now I will continue doing a little bit more paint, but I want to bring in a stamp. Um, new stamp just got. Isn't she cute? Um, this is from Impressions Obsessions, which is io.com, I believe. I'm going to put her right there. So I'm going to real quickly dry the side. Okay, that was why I was saying I'm not going to worry about having to color that side because I knew I wasn't going to be putting this stamp on. And I'm going to use Indian ink. Um, Indian ink, as most of you know from my classes, is a permanent ink. I need to clean this real quick so I can move my book over so I can ink her up. <laughs> I am going to pull towards me too, just so I get a good stamp. Because this is a pretty large stamp, so I am going to have to give some pressure on it. So Indian ink is a permanent ink. Um, you could also use archival ink. You could use stays on. This is Indian ink from Stuart Superior, which is my favorite ink pad. Um, Indian ink is really dark, dark black which is another reason I like it so much, and it is permanent. So if you go over it with anything wet, it will not smear unless it's not dry. So make sure your work is dry. Okay. And this is a cling stamp, and I do um, recommend that you buy cling stamps when you buy stamps. Um, 
and I don't put the block on it when I'm working in my art journal, especially if I'm working anything that's mixed media, because this is going to allow me to be able to get a better press than if I had a um, block on here. So hopefully that's a good image, and it is good. Okay, so now turn it back around. Um, personally, favorite color for a flesh tone um, is Titan Buff from Golden. So that is the one I'm going to pull out. Because now I'm going to go in and paint her skin in and kind of just bring her out and take the flowers and stuff that are in the image towards the back. You'll still be able to see them, which will be fun, but they're going to recede and they're not going to be so dominant as you see. And the paint is translucent enough that if I go over an image that I need to go back and bring back, I can bring the lines back in with my, you know, own pen. So that works really nice. Okay. See that? I'm just going to get that second coat just because that flower is so dominant. And, you know, again, you could cheat too, as I can go back and look at the image, you know, on the stamp and go, okay, I, I took out the nose a little too much, so I need to bring that back in and draw it in. You can, you can do it. Now, I usually probably need to have my book facing me, but I'm going to dry that real quick. And then I can go in and put these lines back in. And where is that one right there? See? All better. See how quick that was? Now, um, as far as everything else from here, this point on, I can go in with um, paint. I could go in with the magic markers. These happen to be the Fiber Castell Big Pit pens. Now, all of their pens are um, Indian ink, so I know they're permanent, which is a good thing because I can go over everything if need be. Give her some blue eyes. And we're going to go with some fun purple hair. Hmm, hold on here. Color hair? Do I want to use? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with the pink. We're gonna go with pink hair. This is kind of a nah. This this pink is too light. I know that. Hold on here. Let me see what I can find. Oh, <laughs> we'll make her a redhead. This is the new um, radiant gel. Get that to focus. There it goes. These are the Radiant Gels. These are dimensional paints by Color Art. They're the same people that make silks. But this paint is a lot thicker. And it gives you really good, um, um, what's the word I want to look for? Uh, dimension is the best word, but you can get really cool paint lines and stuff. If you like your paintbrush lines, um, you can paint on it and then put a... Um, like a texture comb through it, but you can also paint it directly on like I am here and it'll just be paint. But if you wanted to put it on really thick, you could take a texture comb and go through it and get um, some really cool effects also.
we've been having some amazing weather. I hope some of you guys are too. Uh, our weather has just been incredible. Had the door open all day today. It was so nice. Hope some of you guys can say the same because I know some of your weather has been horrible. Oh, I missed part of her face. I'm going to have to go back and do that. But yeah, this paint is really, really pretty. There is a coupon for 15% off of the silks and the um, this dimensional paint over colorart.com and that is c o l o u r a r t e dot com um, and it's uh, art by Terry Sproul all one word all small letters can get you 15 percent off if you want to go and take advantage of that coupon these companies are so generous allowing me giving me coupons um, need the YouTube link? Oh, Joe, put it up there? Okay. Thank you, Joe. It's up there, I think, twice. Okay, great. Thank you. I didn't put it up in the beginning. That was my fault. I didn't think about it. See, I took that week off and messed me all up. <laughs> okay. Hmm. There she goes. She looks good. Let me go in and get some more Titan buff though, because I did miss a spot over here. I didn't see it earlier. Sometimes you need to paint before you see stuff. And I just wiped out her eyebrow, but that's okay. We can put that eyebrow back in. There we go. Look at her. She's looking good. And oh, I hope you can see this now. Now that the um, paint's dried, look at the uh, the beads right there. I'm not showing real well. Let me see if I can get a better. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Isn't that cool? I actually might have to go put some more of those in. They look so cool. <laughs> um, you made raised dots with the dimensional paint. Yes, you can make. Um, who is it that said that? Can you make raised dots with the dimensional paint? Absolutely. Um, you could take the end of your paintbrush and the dimensional paint. I'm so bad about taking the. the labels off my paint brushes. Let me get that out of the way. Put some dots in. Put some my end. Oh, you can't see that. Putting the end of my paint brush. Hold on. Hold on here. Let me zoom out a little further. Okay. End of my paint brush directly into the um, paint bar jar and I can just make dots. And they actually have texture to them. You can actually see a little bit of a nipple on them, I guess is the end. Good word for it. So, since I'm started at that, we need some more. So yes, absolutely. Good question. Yeah, these colors are absolutely yummy. They have such, I hope it's even coming out on the camera. The luster that you're getting is just, and they're pretty thick too. You see how they're really not moving? So it's pretty thick paint. It's fun. They don't have a lot of these colors out yet. So if you want to get um, started, this would be a good one to start because they have, I think, only uh, eight maybe colors out in the dimensional paints because they just brought them out in... Um, December, I believe. So fairly recent. Okay, I need to dry real quick. These dots I made are <laughs> wet everywhere. Okay. 
Okay, let me get this is their yellow. Look at that yellow, isn't that just incredible? I need to do a couple flowers here. This flower right here. But you see how cool this paint over technique is? So you could definitely do this in a canvas. Also, these paints um, go on top of each other really nicely um, because when they when you put on one layer of the silks, they are translucent. But as you add more layers, you get more um, opaqueness to them. So it really allows you to be able to play with them pretty easily. And I'm gonna again take the end of my paintbrush and make some more dots. I was just going to make splatters earlier, but I might still do that. But I really want to do that with yellow. Okay, to make splatters, I usually like to take my paint, put it out on my craft sheet, and water it down. Where's my water? I don't see my spray bottle. And Terry, I don't know if you saw Angie's question. Are you going to add titanium buff to her neck? Yes, I need to do that. But let me finish these splatters real quick. So I'm just adding some water to this uh, paint over here to get it real watered down. Normally I would use my my uh, spray bottle, but I don't see it on my desk. So basically I'm making real watery paint over here on the side. And then I like to use my fan brush. That's this one. This makes the best splatters. So you just get that on your end of your brush and just tap and you get splatters. The best splatters. You don't like a splatter that landed on her face? Take it up while it's still wet. You could also cover her face. Um, you know, like have a piece of paper or something that you could cover like right there. And that would save you from having to clean anything up later. Make it a little easier on yourself. And pick that up. Let's get that titanium buff on the uh, neck. Cleaning out a paintbrush. Now I think I'm going to put a quote down here on the bottom, so I'm not going to take it all the way down. And I did hit some yellow paint. It's still wet, but that's okay. I think I'm going to put my quote right there. Maybe not. Maybe it's going to have to go right there. We'll put something down there. Oh, I know what we can put down there. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> have an idea. I have an idea. Last week, or two weeks ago, I actually cut these out, planning on putting on my canvas, but end up not doing it. So guess what? They're still on my desk. So I'm going to use them tonight. So what I am doing is I cut out white pieces of paper um, last couple weeks ago when we did the canvas. And my idea was to make a piano. So I also cut out some little black ones. Now, Joe, you have a piano in your house. It's not, it's like two keys are black and then one space white, right? Then two keys. Well, it depends. There's a series where you have every, there are every other one and that gives you three blacks. And then after those three blacks, there's two whites, then every other one for two blacks, then the whites. So there are blacks come in a group of three and then a group of two. And so is that, is that enough space in between, or should I? Uh, let me uh, it, you, or you have to move it up a bit because I can't see where my... Yeah, that's perfect. That's just kind of right. Okay, cool. Okay, so we need some... You know, the other thing you could do is probably take, not for your canvas, but that same concept, right? Those strips of white paper could make a great picket fence. Yeah. 
Very cute. You could attach a little fabric to it, get real mixed media, and make it a make some kind of cozy, cozy thing. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So we're going. Okay. So I'm just going to grab some gel medium. I have a brand new jar of gel medium. Yay! <laughs> Got myself one the other day at Michael's. So yeah, you could do all kinds of stuff. You could take um, jewelry and put jewelry in there around her neck. Um, I mean, just really have fun, whatever your little heart desires. Okay, a little higher. So these are my white keys. So this is a really cute way to make, um, you know, music. If you're making a music page, I mean, think about this. This is super easy. How cute this would be all the way across your page. I'm only gonna, I'm gonna stop right at the, um, the seam with mine, just because I am happy with the way this looks over here. Just because I am. How about that answer? Because it's my art journal, and that's the way I want to do it. <laughs> uh, in the chat room, people are saying, since this is musical, could you sing? Oh. That's, what, that's what they're saying, yeah. actually. Yeah, you keep, you keep trying to get me to sing. He really doesn't know that I can't sing. You would think the times that he's been in my car and I've sung in my car, he would know. Really, really, Joseph. I don't listen so, to you in the car. <laughs> He's actually busy. most times I don't really pay much attention at all I just uh-huh 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 see now we know the <laughs> truth now we know the truth okay I see how you are I got you from now on I didn't get under here for some reason I feel it lifting now, as you always know, I always go over everything with my gel medium just to make sure it's completely sealed down so I do go right along my edges. And that way I know nothing will ever lift to my books. I know nothing. I know nothing. I know nothing. <laughs> do you remember that? Yes. <laughs> I love that show. In fact, uh, um, a friend of mine... Mostly yeah. before my time, but I've seen it on, like, Nick at Night. Yeah, a friend of mine watches uh, TV Land, and it's on TV Land. There it we go. way before my time. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not true, guys, but, you know, we'll let him have that dilutions. He's having dilutions again. Okay. I think I want to put... That in her hair. Because again, I have something on my desk, so I'm going to use it. Um, that's a just a metal, um, metal flower. But I think I'm going to ink it up. So let's. I'm going to grab some alcohol inks. And use some alcohol inks to, uh, and I haven't rem um, forgot about the request for alcohol inks. I am working on that. So I'm just going to grab um, a couple colors of alcohol inks and color this up. Those are two of my favorites. A um, couple little things that you might not know about alcohol inks is um, blending solution. Blending solution is nothing more than 91% alcohol. Now, that's not rubbing alcohol. You have to actually go into the drugstore and get something that says 91% alcohol. And that is the exact same thing as um, blending solution. Now, if you haven't played with alcohol inks before, you do want to use the felt tips, the felt um, applicator. 
and then you put your nib into it and just squeeze and get a little bit of a color. Now I put my colors next to each other but not on top of each other and that way you get a good um, sprinkling of both. And so you do want to rotate your thing around so that you get the colors everywhere. And that dries pretty quickly because it is alcohol inks and you can layer on top of it so as it dries you know give it a few seconds to dry then you can go in and put more layers on top if you don't like what you did you can either use the blending solution or the 91 percent alcohol put it over there and completely wipe it clean so that's a quick way to get some beautiful color really quickly onto your um, metal pieces that so I could go down again and put some more color on top of that and even get more more depth going so the more you let it dry in between and then put another color sorry about the blur come on focus it's not wanting to focus very nicely tonight so again every time you go over you get more and more color blending on top Okay, let me clean that up real quick. Yeah, oh well. Okay, bring this back in. Put her flower right there. Now, remember when you are, because you are working in a book and that was metal, you wouldn't have wanted to put it anywhere close to your seam. So that's why I have it way over there. It should be good there and not give me any problems. Okay, now I just need to add a quote. Um, this is a really pretty quote from Versus, Rubber Stamps, and it says, If I could reach up and hold a star for every time you're made, you've made me smile, the entire sky would be in the palm of my hand. So there's, there's the quote. Sorry about the glare. And again, I'm going to use um, Indian ink as my ink of choice. Uh, I'm going to put it right there. But I need to glue that down too, so let's see here. Make myself some room. Indian ink is nice and dark black ink, so that's why I prefer it. And again, I buy unmounted rubber so that I could do my best to have it on top. Yes. This way I get the best print because I can really go in and push on it individually. You just really will get a better print if you use um, Oh, you thought I was going to make a fence? <laughs> How funny is that? But you like the piano idea, isn't it cute? Okay, so there it is. Now that's a little light, but that's okay. I don't mind it. You can still read it. It's good enough. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with that. I do got to go around and trim my edges, and I think I want to do something around the edges. The edges are bothering me. Hmm, what am I going to do? i got some distressed ink on my desk. Maybe I'll do that. I do need to go over and still trim all this. Yep, yeah, don't like that. I think it's just going to stay that way. Except for I do want to put more beads in. I really think the beads are kind of cool. So I am going to use um, a matte medium fluid to pick up some beads. So I'm just going to put pour a little bit of the fluid on my craft sheet over here. Just a tiny, tiny bit because I won't need much. And then pick up some of these beads. 
put some more beads in. Now, um, using the fluid this time instead of the paint, I'm going to end up getting silver beads instead of having the painted colors. Because remember, I put them into the color before, so this is going to make them silver. And the, all the white will dry clear. I just want the texture. Just thought the texture is kind of cool. I know there's people out there that are having a heart attack as I'm putting my brush into those beads like that. So, Harry, now that I think about it, prills from US ArtQuest would be fabulous on those flowers, and they're a little different than microbeads, I think, because number one, there's no hole, but they also have, they're all, they're not all absolutely perfectly round. They're yeah. Different, little different sizes, little different shapes, so it's a little bit more organic looking to me, and yeah. I bet those would be great. I do have some of those. Let's see if I can find them quickly. It's not, we'll play with those next time. Uh, where do I have those? Oh, I think I know where they are. Oh, they're not easy to get to right this second. Um, yeah, but we will definitely, maybe um, next week we'll do something more with flowers again, and we'll have to play with the prills. Okay, I need something for the center of my thingy there. You know, I think that who's your cabinet would go much, much better in your craft room. Think of all the little compartments to put the crafty goodies in. Oh, sweetie, I so needed it in my kitchen. <laughs> you have no idea. Like... It, it it really it, it was amazing what it did for my kitchen. So I'm uh, these are dew drops from um, Robin's Nest. So I'm going to just I'm going to lay a few of them just around the page. Just to give it some texture. So um, these are like their little flat dewdrops are pretty cool from Robin's Nest. They're oval on one side and completely flat on the back. And I know that's really hard to see on camera. But curved there, flat back. So they're really easy to glue down. And they come in tons of colors. And they're just fun to play with. And... So again, I'm going to use, um, since I have some glue right there, I'm just going to use that. And the glue I am using will dry clear, so I won't have to worry about the dew drops showing the little white when, I'm, when it dries. Okay, that looks good. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that little page. Look at that. That turned out really cool. So, napkins. Um, also, I was thinking about doing a napkin squap again, but I'm going to do it differently than I did in the last year, two years. This time, what we're going to do, if you're interested in joining the napkin swap, you will PM me with your um, uh, uh, to get my address. You're going to send me a full package of napkins, minus one. Um, and get some pretty napkins. That's why I'm doing it differently this time. I want to make sure you, you get some really nice napkins. Nothing cheap, something that's really truly artsy. Send me the whole package and then you will get a package back. Oh, I also need a self-addressed stamped envelope and you will get a package back with um, 20 different um, uh, napkins back. So that's how we're going to do it. So I will get you more information about that. So join my group on Facebook called All Things Terry Sprout. 
and uh, we'll talk more about that. So I'm going to do a video on it that you will be sending me napkins and then I will be sending them back out to everybody. So you will only have to go buy one. One of the best prices if you are on a budget, I do still want you to go buy nice napkins, but find them at um, Tuesday morning for really cheap. Except in Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> Except in Columbus, Ohio, you're not allowed to go grab napkins. Even though Joe has plenty, trust me, just go to his house and get them all. And they only get as many. They If they send you a pack of 16, they get 16. If they send you a pack of 20. Exactly. So think of it that way. The more you send me, the more you're going to get back. But make sure they're nice ones. Um, and like I said, Tuesday morning, you can get a package of nice napkins. I think I got these at Tuesday morning for like $2.99. Except in Columbus, Ohio, they have none. <laughs> because Joe has them all. And actually within like a two or three hour radius, there's none. Yeah, because he has them all. Trust me. Really, he does. <laughs> he really, really, really does. But I, I teach a lot of napkin collage classes. They're awesome to use. So um, if you're interested in doing that, PM me on Facebook and I'll talk to you more about it. Um, thank you again very much and I will see you again next Tuesday. Bye.